to get us started, I wanted to invite Mr. Nikos Baltoyanis to present about what's happening here on the ground in Oanina to advance the innovation economy. Good afternoon. My name is Nikos Baltoyanis. I'm head of planning and evaluation unit at the Managing Authority of Program Epirus. I'm going to talk to you about Epirus High Technology and Research Park at Ioannina, an ambitious project underway. Epirus High Technology and Research Park is part of region's vision for a global innovation poll at Ioannina in the new emerging era. The regional economy up to now is based on uh, traditional economic forces. As the governor said, the first one is tourism, at summer time at the west, at the west coast and at winter time at the mountains at the east, and agro-food based on regional agro-products such as high quality, livestock products, dairy products, bakery, water, aromatic herbs, citrus food, fish, including fish farming, etc. The advantages for new competitive uh, sectors are pure environment and land, no heavy industry so far, competitive academic working force available, the local university having wide range of schools and departments, Epirus has an available combination of, of culture and traditions with a unique natural environment, beautiful landscapes combining seaside and mountainous areas. And Ioannina is an excellent place to live. It's a small town with a lake in, no heavy traffic, easy access to Athens and Thessaloniki, which are the main Greek cities. Nice, healthy, traditional local Mediterranean food, low living cost, and competitive salaries. Now, in the new global era, is the right time to enrich the economy with advanced, more competitive sectors, utilizing the regional strengths and opportunities. The main emerging sectors are information and communication technology, health and biomedicine, wellness, energy, and materials. The world is changing rapidly with unexpected economic and social consequences. As Philip Kotler, first and other worldwide experts recognize already that no one can predict the future right now, deglobalization may be underway, and the consuming movement is expecting to emerge. In such an emerging future, innovation is more than ever vital for the regional future. It is therefore the right time for the region of Epirus to build up its own innovation pole by hosting high-tech companies and recruiting qualified personnel by promoting spin-off companies, by providing competent academic human resources available by the local university. How? By providing proper facilities to those to host these companies. So far in the last five years, high technology SMEs have established in town three German ICT companies, one FinTech digital banking, two accounting human resource companies, four ICT local companies with international activities. So far, 10 companies are already here with expectations for 20 establishments by 2024. The project Epirus High Technology and Research Park refers to the construction of a modern set of buildings to host the existing and the newly founded technology and research companies at the startup stage. It's going to be financed 50% by the National Recovery and the Resilience Fund Next Generation EU, 25% by European Investment Bank, and 25% by private bank loan. The project consists of six two-story buildings with a total area of about 15,000 square meters, implemented on a land area of 22,500 square meters. It's located in the municipality of Ioannina, next to the university campus, and the existing spin-off technology park. It's next to the Foundation and Research and Technology Alas Biomedical Research Center. It's easily accessible for the city center, the state airport of Ioannina, and the national road network of Egnatia and Ionia highways. The buildings will be fully accessible for people with disabilities, with a energy efficiency classification, having photovoltaic systems covering great percentage of energy needs, Installed generators cover all critical equipment. The office spaces will be rented 
for an hourly, daily, or monthly fee with rental covering all costs, such as public uh, utility networks, security, maintenance costs, etc. The research and technology areas of the park will be developed in five of the six two-story buildings where spaces from around 1,000 to 3,000 square meters per floor level will be available. In the surrounding area, there will be open recreation space, car parking area, and tennis courts. Connection with the city of Ioannina and Ioannina Airport will be supported by scheduled public transport bus lines and taxis. The 10 main services provided mainly to the startup companies, but not only, has to do with copyright protection, registration of business, business agreements, networking services, business plan, marketing strategy, business events, educational workshop, financing sources, and merging of business ideas. At every floor, there will be closed spaces with movable glass curtain partitions for the manager office, meeting, and conference rooms that will be able to accommodate four to six people. Of course, computer room, facility areas, and mainly open workspaces with the possibility of partitioning the spaces with movable partition of each company's choice, allowing flexibility in the configuration of the office or the room spaces. At each building entrance, there will be a reception area that will host the secretarial support office, as well as the possibility of waiting area for visitors. Fiber op optic connectivity with a 50% backup line capacity and anti-interruptible power supplies and protection of the energy network. And building number one will be fully equipped and will house the park's administration service, a multi-purpose room, startup companies mainly, as well as companies, organizations, individuals that want to deal with open software technologies. At the underground level, a conference center will, uh, will be developed, which can be rented for use by the hosted companies as well as third parties who wish to host their event in the park hall. And buildings two to five are planned to be rented to technology and research companies, which will configure and equip them accordingly to their needs. Each company will have the option of renting from an entire building to a part of a building that needs its needs. Finally, at building number six, we have various support, supporting uses, restaurant and cafe area, both enclosed and open area on the roof and around the perimeter of the building, mini market, library space, uh, private meeting spaces for uh, employees and visitors, and a gym. Concluding my presentation, I'd like to state that we're seeking more global high-tech companies to be hosted here in Ioannina, in the park, and will initiate a global recruitment program once the building phase will start. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I have a few questions that I'll keep and I'll, sh I'll share in a, in a few uh, minutes with you. But I just want to call the attention of everybody um, about some of the things that we've been doing in the GFCC that I think really resonate with your presentation and what you've been doing here in Ioannina. Every year we publish a statement of competitiveness principles, our global competitiveness principles. They are developed in partnership involving our whole community that has a footprint in more than 30 countries today. And principle four, it's about local and regional development. So it says drive global change toward more innovative, sustainable, resilient, and inclusive economies and societies at the local and regional level. And there's like some guidelines that we provide to our members and to the extended community around the globe. In addition to that, this year in the GFCC, we launched the call to action to place-based innovation. This is available online at the GFCC website. It builds on the experience of GFCC members in more than 30 countries in a series of recommendations, discussions, like the one for which you, we, we had the honor to have you, Mayor, over the years. And those two things are really connected to the, the theme of your presentation, 
what you are doing here on the ground. So first, I want to commend you for the initiative. Thank you for sharing that information. And we, we are a membership organization. I think Deborah stressed that in the beginning. And we are proud to have Piro's Bank as one of our corporate members. When we were getting ready to come here, the CEO, Christos Megalo, gave us a call and shared a bit about what you are doing here in Ioannina, building a new digital bank, right? So Maria, I want to turn to you for your remarks and maybe to share with everybody why Ioannina, what's happening? I'm Maria Mavromataki. I am the head of branch network in Northern Greece in Piraeus Bank Group. It is a really a great pleasure for me to be here today amongst all these very important and distinguished people. And uh, I want to welcome you all on behalf of Mr. Christos Megalou, the CEO of Piraeus Group. Uh, first of all, I want to start by congratulating the organizers for choosing a Ioannina for this year's uh, annual summit. And I want to thank them for giving me the opportunity on behalf of Piraeus Bank to present our contribution to date uh, in the area of uh, Ioannina and the region of uh, Epirus in general. This is a region of great interest where our bank has been undertaking some very serious developmental actions uh, all these years, uh, many of which we think are directly connected to the theme of your conference, which is innovation. Actually, this place-based innovation and the place-based approach that takes into account the particularities of its geographic area and the special characteristics local capabilities and the path which can be taken forwards economic development is something we look at very positively and embed in our strategic approach to, of both the markets and clients. At the same time, acknowledging the role of each participant in the local economy, we seek to include all parties and stakeholders reaching out to businesses, local authorities, educational institutions, richer bodies, etc. Epiros and Ioannina, more than other areas, present themselves as an effervescent role model of local activity. As a leading bank, we claim a central role in the vivid local economic network. That is why we salute once again uh, the choice of today's venue. Now, the banking activity, by its very nature, follows the market and therefore comes into direct contact with the innovative practices of businesses. Banks encourage their customers to ride on the wave of innovation and invest in innovative products and services. Sometimes, in fact, banks themselves generate innovation by adjusting their priorities and implementing new processes. Piraeus Bank, in particular, has recognized the importance of local contexts for making innovation flourish and has fully integrated the concept of innovation into its DNA and operations, recognizing that it leads to advanced practices. Both in terms of investment financing and in its own methods, the bank systematically supports changes that are in line with sustainable development which is now a condition of existence for human societies in the whole planet. It is no coincidence that Ioannina is one of the first Greek regional cities that Piraeus Bank chose to establish an e-branch and is the first and only bank that did that here in Ioannina. It is an innovative, fully automated customer service unit which utilizes artificial intelligence systems and enables the public to cover most of their banking needs by interacting with machines and specialized bank staff remotely, even on Saturdays. At the same time, it offers completely unique banking experience as the customers are trained to use all these digital facilities today that will be common practice and self-evident in the future. The good news is that the local community has embraced this uh, Ioannina branch from the very first day, very first day, excuse me, and is utilizing its potential extremely effectively. Besides, 
in the Ioannina metropolitan area, Piraeus Bank is the leader of the banking sector with a share of more than 35%, while we operate five bank branches in addition to their branch and two mobile crews which employ dozens of employees and specialized partners. In parallel, in the whole area of Epiros, we operate 14 branches in total, more, a lot more than any other bank. Piraeus Bank, as most banks around the globe these days, is in the midst of a huge transformational program that affects products, services, operations, customer journeys, not only for cost-saving purposes, or in order to incorporate, incorporate new trends and remain competitive in the market, but also for enhancing our customer experience and the satisfaction of our employees so that we promote their productivity and agility to a higher level. So our aspiration is to welcome our clients in our branches as their consultants for the big decisions of their lives. For example, they when they want to decide on a new mortgage or to buy a life insurance or to decide on a new investment program and all the rest of uh, transactional and servicing part to be transferred to the uh, uh, other channels such as mobile banking, uh, self-service corners, uh, call centers, um, auto machines, etc. In that direction, more than 300 projects are ongoing and planned to be completed by the end of 2023. We already offer digital onboarding, an omni-channel appointment booking platform where the client can directly affect the calendar of the banker, self-service corners where the client can connect online with his whole portfolio, remote signing, video meetings with consultants. In addition to that, as we speak, we are piloting a new branch model that will be the epitome of both physical and digital experience for our clients and combines tradition with open and user-friendly innovation in harmony. Uh, if you ask me, this is exactly the definition of innovation. In my opinion, uh, innovation is not always about reinventing the wheel, but it's uh, doing ordinary things in a, an extraordinary way. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are very well aware that here in Ioannina, tomorrow started yesterday. So in 2016, the Museum of Silversmithing which I recommend as the first visit when you have the time to do that, of the Piraeus Bank Group Cultural Foundation has started its operation in Ioannina. It is an important investment which demonstrates Piraeus Bank's special interest in the region. It is an initiative with clear innovative characteristics since it is an infrastructure dedicated to a professional activity and art with a centuries old tradition in the area, while at the same time, it serves as a productive landmark and attraction. In the region of Ioannina, the academic, government, business, and civil society ecosystems operate in a complementary and coordinated way, favoring the development of activities with innovative characteristics. Piraeus Bank has been a stable partner of the University of Ioannina and the Research Committee for many years, it serves their needs and supports numerous initiatives in the scientific and social field. The same is true with the municipality of Ioannina, for which our bank is an exclusive partner with excellent cooperation. I think Mr. Mario can verify that. On the other hand, the region is home to many new economy businesses, as well as businesses in traditional sectors of the economy, which are improving their performance by exploiting new technologies, investing in digitalization, and applying innovative methods. All of these resulted in the region's society, especially the younger generation, to fully integrate the concept of innovation in its thinking, mentality, and actions. Secondly, the city's horizons have been broadened. It is precisely thanks to the innovation developed by the region businesses that they have increased their reach and extroversion. At the same time, they have become recipients of new ideas and practices, which come from the rest of Greece, 
and abroad to be put into practice here and continue their journey in the rest of the world. On that fertile basis, it is no coincidence at all that Piraeus Bank has chosen partners from Ioannina to launch a fully digital bank and decided to establish its headquarters here exactly in the same city. This new bank has already been formed and staffed with very talented professionals and at this very moment has already applied for full banking license to the regulators and already moving fast to achieve its business objectives. Mr. Navrozoglu, the CEO of Natec, and Mr. Litsikakis, the CEO of the new bank, are both uh, with us here today, and we'll say a lot more later about the new bank and the creation of the new bank, this uh, joint venture that I think is the, is the most new innovative thing we have to offer here in the city and the whole uh, country. Honorable attendees, for Piraeus Bank, the implementation of innovative practices is not only for the sake of impressions, it is directly related to sustainable development of the Greek economy and businesses in which our bank invests strategically and therefore systematically. In the last three years, from 2022, from 20 to 22, excuse me, Piraeus Bank financed the local economy of Ioannina with over 220 million euros while we reached the amount of 350 million in the whole area of Epirus. In 2022 to date, our total disbursements approach 140 million euros with the amount of 80 billion only for the city of Ioannina. So we have to present many examples of companies that are currently being financed by Piraeus Bank in terms of innovation and TSG in various fields of the economic activity, such as security controlled software development, the first investment in turkey farming with total energy autonomy, the first small hydroelectric power plant in the region of Epirus, the first licensed ophthalmological day center in northern Greece, etc. In this context, Piraeus Bank systematically seeks to provide financing to select companies based on criteria related to environmental, social, and governance issues. It is important also to note that the environment criteria overlap with social criteria and governance. ESG is not only about the environment. Diversity and inclusion has long been a priority for us and is integral to the group's long-term strategy. We are committed to creating an environment of belonging where people bring their true best selves to work. We are also committed to being self-aware and more transparent by reflecting on and sharing where we've made progress and where we need to do better. In this respect, Piraeus Bank is the first and only Greek bank that signed the United Nations Women Empowerment Principles, proving its commitment to gender equality in the workplace, marketplace, and society. Being a woman working in such a workplace, you can understand, I cannot be more proud. For the same reason, last year, we launched an initiative, the program Equal, through which we focus on three actions, women founders and makers, uh, women back to work, and profession has no gender. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking about Piraeus Bank, and especially in Ioannina, we have to mention agriculture. Since Piraeus Bank is the main financier of the primary sector of the country's economy, and Ioannina has a rich agricultural potential, mainly livestock farming, it is natural that our bank is the main supporter of the agricultural sector in the region. It is the field, while Piraeus implements innovative financing programs, the main one being contract farming. At the same time, following the imperatives of the new common agricultural policy, which provides for 40% climate action, it encourages the agricultural world to adopt innovative systems, both at the production level, for example, intelligent agriculture, and the level for entrepreneurship. For example, creation of product groups, ag adoption of marketing systems, export promotion. These are all new things, modern approaches in the field of agriculture, an activity that is traditional of great importance for the survival of societies, 
while at the same time in the country he has great scope for modernization with the ultimate aim of improving the incomes and lives of people who work in the countryside. Nationwide, the number of contract banking relationships that Piraeus runs in the cooperation with manufacturing companies exceeds 400. These 400 companies employ more than 50,000 people and export more than 1.5 billion euros worth of goods annually, based on 70 agricultural produ products produced by more than 30,000 farmers. This successful value chain, contract banking, is perhaps the best innovative example of the recent years in the primary sector of Greek economy and demonstrates, as a result, that reforms and adjustments can be made with great added value. The innovative Women in Agriculture is also a program part of the same framework of support of the country's primary sector. It is a horizontal training, mentoring, peering, and networking program aimed at all women who are or intend to become professionally involved in the agricultural agritourism. Participation in the program and access to the digital training, sorry, and mentoring platforms are offered free of charge, and this training lasts for three months. The topics covered by the program are farm digitization, entrepreneurship, and the transition to green agriculture. Honorable attendees, for Greece, Ioannina is not only a beautiful place and an important part of our history. In the recent years, it has become a window to the future, a region in which the concepts of innovation and innovativeness are taking on a tangible dimension. Ioannina contributes to economic progress, business growth, boosts employment, and pushes society forward and upwards. At Piraeus Bank, we are very proud to be part of this ecosystem and support it and to contribute to this development. That is why the region trusts us and consistently keeps us at the forefront of the banking market ahead of the competition, a relationship that, as far as we are concerned, will be cultivated to an even greater extent. As I said in the beginning, here in Ioannina, the foundations are currently being led for our group's new digital bank, which is the most new and innovative thing we have to present for the local and uh, the uh, country's economy. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Maria. Uh, I want to turn to you, Deborah, but maybe I could have a very quick question, Maria. You, you provided an extensive overview about various things that are super important. If you, you, are, you have important commercial operations here, but now you are building something that's innovative. What did you find here that you didn't find in other places that really made you make that decision to bring your digital bank operation here? Roberto, I think I tried to answer, perhaps I will try again in a different way. All this context and the, the mentality of the people and the, the way they coordinate all the forces, starting from the authorities to businesses to the universities, they are all coordinated to the same target, that is how to become innovative in a way that can contribute to the whole nation and then abroad. So we find the fertile, let's say, uh, environment to, to build and create on that and help to be part of this ecosystem. I, Piraeus Bank, to, to say this and I, um, uh, uh, I will uh, stop, uh, he has uh, started investing on the region uh, since, uh, I don't know, for many years ago. So it is something that we are, uh, you know, uh, we have been seeing evolving year after year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. Deborah, I want to turn to you for your reactions. Well, what I really want, thank you, Maria, that was outstanding. And I just wanted to underscore what we've heard from Maria and the leadership and the entrepreneurship, but the future you're creating here is among one of the reasons, and there are many reasons, why the GFCC um, awarded Christo Megalo, the CEO, the Global Competitiveness Award this year for leadership in business and industry. 
and why we're so honored that the chairman of the bank, George Haji Nicolaou, sits on the board of the GFCC. So thank you for your outstanding presentation. I thank you so much. Silis, uh, I want to turn to you. Um, we had a chance to hear from you in Athens and hear about some of the experiences that you have in different regions of Greece. And two things called my attention. One is that you are crossing the boundaries, working as Deloitte, really mingling your operations with other companies. This is something that we've been talking about in the GFCC. We, we have a report that we called Convergence and Circulation. That's about going beyond the traditional organizational boundaries, right? And the other thing that call, really called my attention is your experience about innovation hubs, the work that you've been leading to deploy those hubs in different parts of Greece. What are your reactions to what we have just heard? First of all, I would like to uh, thank you very much for being here. It's truly uh, an honor to be uh, in this gathering. I've heard amazing things, amazing uh, innovative initiatives, and I'm really proud to be part of this discussion. Roberto, uh, we, uh, as you know, we have uh, started uh, developing uh, Innovation Hub in Thessaloniki since four years now. Uh, it was an amazing journey. Now our hub uh, counts almost 1,000 professionals, mainly in Thessaloniki, with hub uh, offices in uh, Patra and uh, Iraklio. Uh, in this amazing journey, we have seen uh, uh, a lot of things. Uh, we saw strengths that we capitalize on in various uh, regions. In Thessaloniki, which was uh, which the main hub, we saw the strengths that were mentioned by the governor, by the mayor, and all of you. Uh, the very strong university with a very strong talent pool of graduates. Uh, a very nice place to live, like Thessaloniki, like Ioannina. A truly uh, cosmopolitan with uh, multicultural heritage and extroversion, what the mayor said is very similar to Thessaloniki as well. Uh, and uh, a very nice place to live. And I would have to say, and a very welcoming group, what Maria said. Uh, we uh, came like a month ago. Uh, we were very, very welcomed uh, by the mayor, by the governor, by the university, which I think it's very, very important to start a venture. Uh, so, so, following uh, our plan, uh, we intend also, and that's an announcement, to establish a new uh, digital high-tech innovation hub in uh, Ioannina. We have... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so this is... Uh, no, this thank you to you, it's not to us, and thank you to all. So we are setting up a hub at the Science and Technology Park of uh, Epirus at the University of Ioannina. This will be our base. Uh, we already do have uh, employees working uh, remotely from Ioannina, so the first plan is to host them there, but our plan is to expand and uh, hire more people uh, in Ioannina in high-tech, in innovation, in uh, exponential technologies. So this is our plan. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud that we may be able to contribute a little bit on uh, this journey that you, that, you have all, uh, that you have already embarked in order to transform Ioannina into a truly uh, hub of talent, technology, and innovation of global reach. And this can be done because uh, you have mentioned that the world is changing, the way we work, we live, we communicate is changing. Uh, COVID, digital transformation has brought huge changes. It has actually uh, lowered the barriers. It has actually made uh, geographic boundaries irrelevant. So talent is becoming global. Innovation is becoming global and it's giving rise to new models, new operational models where people from different perspectives, background, knowledge can work seamlessly together and produce innovation. So this is our target. We are very proud and thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much for, and again, con 
Congratulations. You, you, you mentioned things like quality of life. It just reminded me about our call to action. Point nine is focus on high value added industries and innovative and quality of life. As we know that global talent really want to live in nice places, right? So it's great to be here. Um, governor, it, it's truly an honor uh, to be here in your region. It's my first time in your region, my second time in Greece. So what have you learned from the journey of pushing your region into the, into the future that maybe you could share with everybody here? Εμείς χαιρόμαστε που σήμερα ήρθατε εδώ. Ε, λέμε μια παροιμία στην Ήπειρο. Το αγώγι ξυπνάει τον αγωγιάτη. Τι θέλω να πω με αυτό. Ότι ξαφνικά στην Ήπειρο, βλέποντας το περιβάλλον το επιστημονικό και όλο το περιβάλλον ε, της Ήπειρου, Ήρθανε αρκετές εταιρείε και εγκαταστάθηκαν εδώ. Ε, όπως είναι οι εταιρείε που υπάγονται στην Περμύρα. Ε, ήρθαν, μας αγκάλιασαν και τους αγκαλιάσαμε. Το ίδιο θα κάνουμε και σε όλες τις εταιρείε που θα έρθουν εδώ στο κέντρο που ετοιμάζουμε. Είμαστε έτοιμοι από όλα. Σε λίγο καιρό θα δημοπρατήσουμε το έργο. Και... Χαιρόμαστε ότι το Συμβούλιο Ανταγωνιστικότητα σήμερα ήρθε στα Γιάννα γιατί αυτό κάνει μια μεγάλη τιμή και σε μας σε έναν αγώνα που έχουμε ξεκινήσει εδώ και δύο χρόνια. So uh, we are very happy once again to have you here and uh, it is our honor to be here again. Um, uh, it's, um, it's uh, uh, the, the cooperation among uh, the, the it was uh, the choice of uh, the companies uh, that uh, maybe uh, gave a, a nerd uh, for the, this uh, uh, for this growth um, the the choice of Parmira uh, it was uh, really a start for us uh, to establish here it was a start for us and uh, uh, push us to to find new ways uh, to to promote innovation that is why uh, that is why we, we uh, there is a close cooperation among, uh, between uh, among the companies and the regional authority and uh, of course uh, we are here uh, we are here to support uh, all the new interesting companies that we would like to to host uh, their, uh, to establish here uh, we are ready to to launch the procurement for the uh, construction of the of the park and um, according to our estimation it will be ready in about 2 years Kesimera. Ακούσαμε τον κύριο Καφάτο για την Deloitte και αυτό δίνει και μια άλλη προοπτική σε μας. And of course uh, the announcement of Mr. Καφάτο so it is uh, very interesting and uh, we are very happy to hear it and uh, give us a new urge and uh, a new potential here. Thank you so much for that. That's very inspiring in the word cooperation that you just mentioned. I think that's, that's very important. Maybe what we could do now is to see if there are perspectives from around the globe or even questions or comments in relation to what's happening here on the ground in Noanina. We've heard about some exciting examples. So maybe, Yana. Okay, uh, so uh, I wanted to say that uh, the competitive advantage of uh, Jan uh, as a Greek, I can say, and as a researcher in Horizon projects that are the applied research of the European Union, uh, is that uh, it is at the borderline 
So that means that they, they have a, a priority to get uh, European projects. Uh, that means that for whatever other nation is not in Europe, uh, it's good to be in that cluster, to belong in that cluster, because that way they, they benefit from all the spin-offs that can uh, be created in this city. And also because I have, um, um, I'm running a program now with the University of Leuven. Leuven is exactly, Leuven is next to Brussels. It's a Belgian university and uh, they are situated in a city, in a small city of 100,000, exactly like here. And they have uh, 15,000 students. Right now, Leuven is the most um, competitive and technolo technological advanced city in, in Europe just because they have that mixture. A lot of students and a small city, closed one, they don't use any cars in the city. They only use bicycles. Um, so it was formed for the students. So that's uh, uh, the next step, I think, for Joanna is to try to, uh, uh, to adjust uh, and adapt according to the student life. Um, so uh, I think this is uh, the best they can do and uh, become competitive. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Dimitris. I have a question for the mayor. <coughs> the craftsmanship, especially jewelry, is very important. It is very well known in Yanena. What is the plan to incorporate this in the innovation zone maybe become the center of Europe in terms of producing jewelry, but also the met metallurgy of the, of the metal. You are, you are right. We are trying at the moment to support all the local factories in uh, this procedure, even though it's difficult because we don't find new technicians. That's our primary task is to support to keep this tradition in the future, even though due to the prices or other circumstances, this is, is not very easy at the moment. Carlos, please, please. Yeah. Um, well, the beauty about uh, to be here in a group like this is connections. Everybody is talking about connections, connections, connections. Thank you very much, Deborah, no? because I start my connections during this week, learning philosophy of Arabic countries or trade balance in Zimbabwe or research agenda in Japan. And I learned so much with Simons and Simeon. No? I still don't have enough content to pass the test. I still studying, but uh, I learned too much. Uh, I saw in the presentation of Nichols no, for Technological Park, uh, the whole infrastructure, but they, he mentioned a lot about the university, no? and uh, I wonder if he could mention more connections with the university, no? because the buildings is one thing, but by the end of the day, in a group like this, I think people can do anything and, and everything that they want. No, I think Mr. Mayo just mentioned quality of life, no? And the speed of technology, especially when we have money, is one. But the capacity of society to observe the change is another thing, no? And uh, I would like to hear with Nikos, from Nikos, the connections between the technological park and the university specifically. And Mr. Mayo, I would like to import cheese to Brazil, no? Greek cheese. And in order to do this, I really need a food engineer working here in the technological park. Do you have the skills here to provide this? The cheese must be good as if I eat here, no? I want uh, to receive that in Brazil. Thank you. Nikos. Of course, you're right. Uh, university is actually the main reason that uh, what has happened here, uh, how what happened here started. Uh, the companies recognized the. Uh, 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 the quality of the people come out of the university, so they are trying to benefit from them. 
What we want to do uh, after we finish the, the construction of the park is, uh, of course, in cooperation uh, with, with the university, uh, one of the main buildings which has to, to deal with startup companies has to be in uh, very close cooperation with the university. Uh, probably they will be in the manage of the, of the park as well. And uh, it's exactly the main reason why things started and why things are going to uh, keep going and uh, be more uh, 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 in the future more uh, is uh, yes yes okay more optimistic the future thank you thank you so much Nikos I, I wanted to leave a question in the air uh, for Maria and Vasilis about how do you work with universities yeah, so please have that in mind we'll turn to the mayor and then I, I wanted to invite you to comment about that. Yeah, I think that the new legislation would permit more easily the cooperation of uh, private sector with the universities. Until now, there were problems, uh, which, as we have discussed previously, but now it's a new legislation, and I hope that this new legislation <laughs> will be more flexible and will permit a more close collaboration of the private sector with the universities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. I think this is um, coming from a different country, a country far away. And I think we have colleagues like Gianna from Brazil who has been fighting to improve institutions and legislation in Brazil. And maybe she could come in later. But I think this is a common issue around the globe to improve legal frameworks to allow for public-private partnerships and collaboration, especially between industry and university. So thanks for highlighting the importance of those updates. Steve, I want to turn to you, and then we can get uh, the final perspectives from our speakers here. First of all, I'd like to commend you on the vision and what you're accomplishing. It's, just, it's really inspiring and quite amazing. Uh, I grew up in Santa Clara, California, otherwise known as Silicon Valley. And so I watched that transformation as a child, um, and I went to one of the universities there. And so I know how important it is to have a local university, as you're just commenting upon. Um, and it is really amazing what has happened in that area in terms of innovation and driving the economy. I would add, however, that Mr. Mayor and others, you might also look at, when you think about Silicon Valley, take a step back and ask what mistakes it made that you don't want to repeat, all right? Especially as we looked at place-based innovation uh, in terms of you have a beautiful area here and making sure that you preserve that for the citizens who live here and for the visitors you'll have. And so I'd encourage you to think as you go forward about, you know, what are the many good things that happened with Silicon Valley, but also what are some of the things that perhaps you could do better here in Greece? So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, maybe Maria and Vasilis, how do you work with universities quickly? We have a, a, about two minutes to, fin to close. I think the nature of our cooperation is basically financial, I would say. We cover all their uh, financial and transactional needs. Uh, you know, universities are very complicated organizations with a lot of... Uh, you know, jobs to be done behind. And a bank like Piraeus Bank with such a big experience uh, has a lot to offer. So we cover uh, especially uh, financially their needs. Also, uh, we can cover and um, support some initiatives they can take, for example, um, a special conference or something they ask for us in terms of uh, place, Sometimes, especially in the cities, it, it hasn't happened here yet, but because there is a lot of place. In some cities, they ask from us to uh, grant a place for them to organize something. But especially, it is in the, in the financial circle of their needs. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, universities are our major partners uh, in Greece, in particular in Thessaloniki. 
Uh, we work very closely with the universities in order to do joint training programs. We do boot camps. We do uh, uh, trainings. Uh, we do a lot of work on reskilling, on upskilling, uh, because the idea is to increase the talent pool. Uh, that's uh, the most important factor in order for a region, for a city to be able to grow. So we work very collaboratively in order to uh, uh, motivate more women to go into STEM, we, to, for youth to follow careers that are of demand. We work a lot with the youth in order to generate the skills of the future, so we work a lot of them, to be, besides technical skills, to develop skills like uh, adaptability, uh, critical thinking, passion, uh, which are very relevant in a definitely uncertain world. So uh, overall, the, the universities are our major partners, and uh, this is actually the only way ahead in order to invest in the talent of the region, because this is the only way to further grow. Thank you so much. Do you envision those workshops being deployed here soon as you are implementing the Innovation Hub? Surely. Uh, as I told you, we intend to set up uh, a digital innovation hub in Ioannina, but in parallel we intend uh, to invest uh, and collaborate with the universities in order to enhance this talent pool and do all the things necessary in terms of workshops, joint programs, uh, financing, whatever needed, but also to uh, work a lot on uh, enhancing the collaboration, which is the other fabric uh, of uh, the innovation ecosystem, uh, supporting startups and enhancing the collaboration with all the current and the future stakeholders. Because our intention is uh, to help Ioannina not only be uh, the best place to visit and to live, but one of the best places to innovate and thrive. Thank you so much for sharing that. Congratulations again. There are three words that I heard and I believe that can summarize our conversation. The first, environment and alignment. So coming here because there is an alignment of key stakeholders, there's an environment that's conducive or can even be more conducive to innovation in the future. Second, in that environment, cooperation, we heard that from the governor. Thank, thank you so much for sharing that the capacity to cooperate and to have state, city stakeholders working together. And third, quality of life and the nexus connecting quality of life and talent. This was an amazing start for our workshop here. We need to transition to the next session and we will hear from GFCC colleagues from around the globe to lead the session. It truly is a pleasure to turn to the president of Compete Greece Simos Anastasopoulos. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. Uh, congratulations on a job uh, well done. Before proceeding to the next session, I would like to make a comment because what Mr. Cafato said is really the essence of what we are trying to do here, is the real essence of uh, promoting innovation. Jobs. Create new jobs. Well-paid, engaging jobs. Allow me the Greek, please. Δουλειές, αυτό θέλουμε. Καλοπληρωμένες, καλές δουλειές που θα θέλουν τα παιδιά μας να δουλέψουν και να ασχοληθούν εκεί. Congratulations to Mr. Καφάτος, because what Deloitte did in Thessaloniki was an experiment, a very successful experiment. And I really hope that you can repeat it here, Vasilis, because it's uh, valuable for us all, sure for the region and everybody else.